Hey everyone, it's uh, Mike up in Canada. I thought I'd, I'd show everybody how I do my ice baths here in cold climate. If there's anybody else out there that is thinking of setting up something at home and you've got cold winters that uh, stay below zero, might want to try this out as well. I've got my 160 gallon stock tank. Keep it on the porch. I cover it with the tarp. Just make sure I don't have any animals floating the next morning. Secure it with a bungee cord and I've got a stock tank DA so that floats inside. I have it plugged into my extension. What that does is it keeps the keeps the ice from forming on the surface. It's usually made for the, the animals on farms allow them to have access to their water it doesn't freeze over on top and uh, using that it it has automatic uh, shut off it'll just keep the water warm enough so it doesn't freeze which translates to five degrees my water doesn't sit at zero or around that it, it's exactly five degrees all the time which is cold enough for me uh, typically for recovery from workouts I'd sit in uh, 9, 12 degrees for anywhere of 14, 15 minutes for some good muscle recovery at the zero or, or in this case my five degrees you'd probably only survive in the outdoors 10, 15, 20 before you start uh, getting weak losing coordination and strength when your blood starts leaving the extremities and, and surrounding the core to try and keep you alive so you can't really stay too long in uh, the zero degree weather which which is fine because it gives some other great benefits, some mental fortitude and all the other great stuff. But uh, all that to say is five degrees is plenty cold for me and because it's five, I could probably manage staying in there for a little bit longer than I could at zero with all the same great benefits. And added bonus, I don't have to shatter any, any ice on the surface in the morning. So the uh, stock tank de-icer got that used for 15 bucks. They run about $30, $40 at uh, Tractor Supply or any other uh, Rona outdoor hardware stores. And the tank itself is from Tractor Supply. It's 160 gallon. Zoom in there. Tough Stuff products. This 160 gallon is a little bit different than some of the other ones I've seen. It's, it's more wider, less tall. Still plenty deep for me to, to submerge my, myself in, uh, but it gives me extra shoulder width and I can really just uh, chill out and lean my head over the edge and just relax in it. So uh, that's a good stock tank if you're looking to buy one. I think uh, it might set you around 250 bucks. Much cheaper than making a chest freezer ice bath. Definitely cheaper than buying a legit ice bath for cold water immersion. So first thing you do is you always make sure if you are gonna go this route, you always unplug the de-icer before you remove it from the water. And in addition to the de-icer, I've got this spa chlorine saucer floats around with the smaller one inch chlorine pucks. I've got about three or four in there and I find that combined with the cold water, combined with the fact that I always make sure I'm I'm cleaned and, and wiped down before I jump in. I don't have to deal with the hassle of running a filter or doing any other uh, measures to keep the water clean. So there you have it. I'll uh, set up the camera and I'll, I'll jump in so you can get a, a sense of how this 160 gallon stock tank uh, fits someone of my stature at uh, six foot, 190 pounds. One more thing I should point out before I film myself getting in, in case you wonder what I'm wearing. I uh, found that I was limited to how long I can stay in by uh, the tolerance of my fingertips and toes, my extremities. So what I do is I might invest in some waterproof socks, but for now, or some neoprene socks, but for now I wear nice thick wool sock with a plastic grocery bag over top and a second sock keep it all together with an added elastic band. On the hands, I wear a merino 
glove covered with just your average surgical glove and elastic around the wrist. It takes at least a minute and a half before the water actually seeps in and when the water does seep in it's uh, much more tolerable than having your skin exposed to the icy cold water direct. Um, I enjoy having my skin, my toes and fingers exposed as well. It just limits the amount of time I can stay in. So I go this route just to enjoy the ice bath a bit longer. Like I said, with the gloves and socks, I barely feel the cold on my fingertips, but everywhere else, 100%. And as predicted, five degrees exactly. Alright everyone, since my last uh, two clips, the weather got substantially colder and uh, I had mentioned how I was at 5 degrees consistently regardless of uh, the temperatures at night. That was when the temperatures didn't get past minus 15, minus 18 degrees Celsius. A week since then we've been having minus uh, 25, minus 30 even nights and uh, the tub froze over. So. Not a problem, I still think this is the greatest, cheapest way to have your ice bath. Just means that uh, you have to do a couple of things. You have to unplug your the icer. You have to break up the ice. to now you can leave the ice in and uh, it'll make for a really great ice bath you feel like you're outdoors surrounded by all the floating ice and you can do that uh, but definitely once you're out before you cover it back up for the next day take the ice out it'll freeze over very quickly with the floating ice remaining in the tub so if you get a strainer or with your hands but when you get out all the ice, you put it into a bucket. And then bring it in the house with you, let it melt. Return it to the tub the next day. Is, uh, this is thick ice and a couple of days in a row of removing it, the water level is going to go down considerably. It's a hassle in winter to try and get the hose out to refill it. It's also uh, cost you in water bill. So that's my recommendation and one extra step even to take is to top it up with uh, hot water. When you do pour it back in, do that the night before or shortly after once it's melted. If you add the hot water into the ice, the ice should melt quickly and you can return it in that same day after your ice bath. And what that'll do is you can pour it specifically on the areas that still have ice and that'll melt down and by the next day your tub's cold again and hopefully uh, you just got a consistent thin layer of ice that you repeatedly break every time you follow the same process. And that'll only, that'll only have to be done through that cold February month that we're having right now, uh, where we get the really uh, cold spells. So that might be a hassle you go through for two weeks maybe of your winter during your ice baths. Uh, we already see in the forecast here where I am that we're getting into the close to minus two, zero degrees uh, 
next week, so I won't have to worry about this. It's worth the hassle because I'll have my ice bath. I'll be enjoying that right through to March, April. Nights are still cold. The water will still be cold. So uh, if this happens, don't give up on it. Don't let it freeze over. Keep breaking it or else it'll turn into one big solid brick of ice and you won't have a tub. It, uh, it won't be thawed out and capable of uh, submerging in uh, well past April. So uh, keep at it with this process and you'll have the greatest ice bath for the cheapest price uh, money can buy. All right, hope that helps. Let me know in your comments if uh, you have a slimmer setup or you tried this exact setup and any recommendations you might have for me. That would be great. I'd love, love to hear those. All right.